kids, it is study time once again. I'm Teacher Rachel, your teacher in Science 4. Our topic for today is all about specialized structures of terrestrial and aquatic plants. Not all plants look the same. They have different flowers, stems, and even root structures that they use in order to adapt to certain environments. Plants live in different places depending on their characteristics. Plants can grow in water, soil, and air. They can be terrestrial or aquatic. Any plants that grow on land or need to be on dry land to survive is called terrestrial plants. They need nutrients to survive both from the air and the soil. They are planted deeply in the soil. Through its roots, the plants draw minerals and any needed moisture from the soil. However, aquatic plants are plants that live in water. They can only grow and thrive in water environment. Some aquatic plants can live out of the water, but they need to be placed again in water for survival. Some aquatic plants are classified as submerged. Characteristics of submerged plants include having all or almost all of the plant growing underwater. Examples, we have eelgrass, water milfoils, and sago pandweed. Others are immersed aquatic plants like lucky bamboo, golden pothos, and kala lily. They have stems, leaves, or flowers that grow out of the water. Plants with waxy leaves like gabi leaves help protect themselves from dehydration as a result of too much exposure to sunlight. Some plants have also developed structure to store water especially in the desert. Cactus is the best example of this. It has fleshy stems to conserve water for a long time. It also has spines as its specialist structure to protect them from predators. Roots of the plants adapt themselves to their habitat. They differ in sizes and shapes depending on their functions. Examples are radish and potatoes with bulbous root systems. Thorns and hairs in some plants like Nipang Aso are protective structures. Aside from the plants mentioned, there are different plants with specialist structures that enable them to survive and adapt to their environment. Some of the plants are the following. Aquatic plants have also some of the characteristics that help them survive in water. Some of them have thin cuticles primarily to discourage water loss. Thus, most hydrophytes have no need for cuticles. They have stomata that are open most of the time because water is abundant and therefore, there is no need for it to be retained in the plant. This means that guard cells on the stomata are generally inactive. Some have flat leaves and air sacs for flotation. Flat and buoyant leaves of plants help the plant float in water. The water lily leaves have thick and buoyant leaves while lotus leaves are flat and broad, so they tend to float in water surfaces. Let's try this assessment. Number 1. Which of the following plants have fleshly stems as their specialist structure? conserve water for a long time. A. Cactus, B. Cogon, C. Pineapple, D. Strawberry. If your answer is A, then you are correct. What specialized structure is common to Rose and Bougainvillea? A. Both have stinging ears, B. Both have sticky leaves, C. Both have thorny stems, D. Both have fibrous roots. If your answer is letter C, then you are correct. Which of the following plants has hair on its stem? A. Santol, B. Mayana, C. Lipang Aso, D. San Francisco. If your answer is letter C, then you are correct. Number 4. What specialist structure helps succulent plants respond to and survive in a dry soil for a long period of time? A. It has fine hair. B. It has thick stem. C. It has sharp pointed leaves. D. It has thick and fleshy stems. If your answer is letter D, then you are correct. Number 5. Why is it that water hyacinths float in water? A. It is light in weight. 
B. Its stem is filled with air. C. It has a spreading long root stem. D. It has light rounded waxy leaves. The correct answer is letter C. It has a spreading long root stem. Goodbye.